How does your culture impact your biases? It's an important question to consider, as you may find it impacts the way you perceive others. And guess what? Others are doing the same to you. My name is Sylvie Di Giusto. And while much of my time is spent as a keynote speaker and an author working with professionals on their first impressions, I'm here with you today to answer a question sent in by Jennifer asking if different cultures weigh first impressions differently. But before we jump into that, I want to welcome any new viewers. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified for new videos. And I encourage all of you to connect with me wherever you stumbled over this video. Let's keep in touch. Also, stick around until the end of the video to gain access to a variety of free resources that I have created with your professional needs in mind. Now, let's get back into Jennifer's question. Different cultures absolutely weigh first impressions differently. And the primary reason for this is because we all have different values, different biases, and therefore assess people and situations differently. The first step to better understanding the first impression you are making on others is to understand your own cultural biases you carry and then to understand the cultural environment you are entering in each encounter, plus considering the biases each of the individuals you may interact. For example, I grew up mainly in France and Austria. Life and work luckily brought me to the United States. Yet, I work and have encounters with people from all over the world. It's quite complex, I understand. However, only if you first understand your own biases and how you react to others, you can better understand how others are culturally biased and what is important to them. So let's get practical with a few examples, a few simple examples. Knowing what to wear at a business meeting has not only something to do with a cookie cutter dress code approach, it also depends on where the meeting takes place and who will attend possibly from all over the world. Or how about greeting one another? For example, you do not want to enter an encounter with your hand out for a handshake to someone who is used to a culture that does not touch. And you don't want to order alcohol at a business dinner with someone whose culture or religion frowns upon alcohol consumption. By showing others that you care and respect their culture, you will in turn gain their respect and go to favor in exchange. This not only shows that you respect your differences, but also that you took the time to prepare yourself for your meeting and have adjusted your appearance, your behavior, and your communication to honor both of your cultural identities. Here are many questions that you should ask yourself before you have an encounter with another professional from around the world. First, how do I address them? And what comes across as an inappropriate when greeting them? For example, in many Asian cultures, it is inappropriate to touch one another. With your greeting, it is also important to think about their titles and how important it is to refer to those titles when you are addressing them. Second, what is the dress code? How does this culture dress in the workplace? And how may this differ from your usual attire? What are the religious values in these regions? And how does this impact their attire? Think about how you can alter your dress to not abandon your own culture and identity, but to incorporate their values with your own. However, be careful though with picking something from their traditional wardrobe routines, thinking it would be a nice gesture to wear it. This can backfire easily, as you are not part of their culture. Third, what are useful or harmful business terms? What words do you use in your everyday business that have multiple meanings that could come across as insulting to someone of another culture? Or are there terms you need to know before going into a conversation? Next, and this one is incredibly important. How do they perceive time? 
Is being early considered rude? Is being on time considered late? What are their working hours and what's their work speed? Every culture is different with time etiquette. And if you are unclear on theirs, you may come across offensive or disorganized. Fifth, how does the culture you are immersing yourself into organize their meetings? If you are very structured during your business meetings, but those you are meeting with find this route, you may be forced to slow down. Do they prefer an agenda or a more loose meeting? How do they use technology in meetings and what's their typical presentation style? If they prefer more collaboration, you may need to be more prepared to pitch in throughout. It is extremely important to do your research into this before preparing a presentation that may not be well received. Six, talking about collaboration. Analyze their leadership and team culture. How do they delegate tasks? How do they handle conflicts? How do they share information within their teams? It is extremely important to understand how they work with each other so you can better work with them. Next, what is the current political and economic environment like in the region? Are there laws or regulations you should be aware of? You want to make sure you do not step on a minefield by not knowing the basics and the facts. Eight, knowledge might not be power, but most often it helps to impress. Are there any relevant historical events to know? What's the educational structure? What's their typical lifestyle? What are their major cities? The geographical influences? How open-minded are they in terms of diversity, gender, races, sexuality? Last but not least, other topics that can be very uncomfortable when approached incorrectly include your sense of humor. Uh, if guests are expected to bring a small gift, who should pick up the bill for a lunch or a dinner meeting? And what dietary restrictions you should be aware of ahead of time? All of these questions are important for you to answer about those who you are going to meet. In the cultural environment, you are going to meet them and you will also need to answer them for yourself. And yes, I know, that's a lot to ask for. And you will never have the chance to be correct in all the different ways. You will never be able to make that perfect first impression on all others, no matter where they are from. However, a total lack of awareness can certainly lead to bad first impressions and poor decisions. Cultural awareness helps us reduce the chances of making bad first impressions and increase the chances of us making an impactful one from the very beginning. So what are some of the examples you have noticed where professionals around the world weren't aware of their own cultural biases or could care less about those of others around them? I would love you to share them with us in the comment section. And if you would like to learn more about the way you present yourself best as a leader in any workplace around the world, I encourage you to check out my book, The Image of Leadership, which I will link below. I will also add a few links to books and services specific to this topic that I have enjoyed reading and using. And before you go, be sure to subscribe and hit the tiny bell to turn on my post notifications. Let's keep in touch so I can answer all of your first impression questions. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in my next video or somewhere around the world to explore another cultural background of someone amazing, just like you.